So love him or hate him, and yes, there are plenty of reasons to hate him, but regardless of that, you cannot deny the fact that Jake Paul is raking in some serious boxing earnings, and he's doing it faster than the ultimate legend, Floyd Mayweather. Now, don't get me wrong, Floyd Mayweather is still the undeniable champion when it comes to making money in the ring. He actually holds all top 4 spots in the world's top 10 biggest paydays in boxing history. However, when he just started out boxing, he was making a lot less than Jake Paul's making right now. Compare this to Jake Paul, who has already landed a $2 million contract for his fight against Tyron Woodley, which by the way does not include the pay-per-view buys, and this was only Jake's fourth professional fight in just three years of boxing. Now of course you could say Mayweather started way earlier than Jake, and back then the sport was less commercial so there was less money to be made, to which I say, okay, fair enough. But then let's compare Jake's earnings to a more modern day start in boxing, and let's look at Tommy Fury for instance. Because this Love Island superstar is just like Jake, more influencer than boxer, with over 3.6 million followers on Instagram, and he's not even close to earning what Jake Paul makes. By the way, leave a comment on who would win in a fight between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, should be an interesting one. Now for his last fight, Tommy Fury only got paid $15,000, which is an absolute joke because he makes around $27,000 per Instagram post, and posting pictures on Instagram does not take you 3 months of hard training and sacrifice, not unless you're living that summer ray booty lifestyle. Bellissima. So what makes Jake Paul so special that he can earn millions after just one professional fight? Because if there's one thing we've learned from Austin McBroom over here, it's that simply having tons of social media cloud is not going to translate into people spending serious money on your boxing event. We saw this with a dumpster fire that was Social Gloves, linked up here, where another YouTuber thought he could easily sell pay-per-view buys worth at least $200 million. Spoiler alert, he ends up getting sued hard. So check it out, it's a good one. Now when we look at Jake Paul's total earnings, we see that he was getting serious money right from the start when fighting as just an amateur boxer in his first fight on his brother's undercard in the KSI vs Logan Paul fight. Now most boxing and martial arts fans saw this as a total joke, and yes, I have to admit, the boxing was somewhat, um, let's say, alternative. Nah, f*** it, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. However, this event was actually the biggest amateur boxing match in history, and Jake Paul made around $900,000 in total, which included the purse, the pay-per-view buys, and the sponsorship deals. His second fight was against the Nissan Gib, who's also a YouTuber, and both were fighting for the first time as professional boxers. It is estimated that Jake Paul got paid a cool $1 million for his fight, which means that we are just two fights in, and Jakey is already sitting on $2 million. That is absolutely insane, and a great achievement. But this is only the beginning, and it gets much crazier. Because in his third fight, Jake Paul took on Nate Robinson, an ex-professional basketball player, and it was in this fight where Jake delivered his most savage knockout to date, turning the NBA superstar into an NBA super meme. At least Nate Robinson was now worth $10 million. Well, that is, the NFT of Nate Robinson getting knocked out was worth $10 million. I don't get NFTs, man. They, they make no sense. Anyways, Jake was definitely taking home some sweet cash that day, because through the guarantee that was set quite low for this one, at just around $600,000, the total payday for Jake was much higher since he got a massive chunk of the pay-per-view sales. Now unfortunately, there's only Jake's worth on record on how much he actually took in, however we do have several sources saying that Nate Robinson made a total of $2 million for the fight, which leads me to believe that the $10 million estimate for Jake Paul is not that far off from the truth. A quick side note here, Nate Robinson only ever made $4.5 million in his best year in the NBA, and most years he only made around $1 or $2 million, with a career low of less than $50,000 in his last year. So $2 million for just 6 months of training for a retired NBA player that is valued at less than $50,000? I mean wow, doing business with Jake Paul means getting paid, big time. So this puts Jake's total earnings at around $12 million, and we still have to factor in his two biggest paydays. The first was the fight against Ben Askren, a former MMA fighter with multiple championships and a respectable 19-2 record. But as some of you might know, Ben's boxing skills were not much better than those of Nate Robinson, and thus Jake Paul delivered another easy knockout. Now my favorite moment of the fight was when the announcer mispronounced Ben's name, and it clearly f***ed with his head. So maybe that's why he lost. Who knows? Anyways, Jake collected a nice $690,000 up front, and the percentage of the pay-per-view buys. Now here's where things get a bit murky again, because the official figures have not been released and we only have Jake Paul's claims to go with. Now Jake claims 1.5 million pay-per-view buys at around $50, which would result in a total of $75 million generated. 
However, several insiders say that that number is way too high and is more likely to be around 800,000 pay-per-view buys. So this would bring the total to around $40 million of which Jake could get a large portion, not to mention the additional sponsorship deals. So if you go off the last fight against Nate Robinson and the fact that Ben Askren is a bigger name and actually a fighter, it is not unrealistic to say that Jake Paul made around 50 million in total from the fight against Ben. This brings Jake Paul's total earnings after just four fights including one amateur fight up to $27 million in less than three years of boxing. And remember, this doesn't even include any of the side deals such as Jake Paul's merch that he creates for every single boxing event. Jake Paul and his brother Logan Paul are known for selling incredible amounts of merch with their YouTube platform. So having this additional boxing platform that reaches a whole new audience will definitely boost the total merch sales and add a couple more millions to the pot. And this brings us to the biggest payday for Jake Paul so far, which was the Tyrone Woodley fight where Jake got paid a hefty $2 million for just showing up. And the best thing about this deal was that at this point Jake had set up his own boxing promotion company called Most Valuable Promotions, so now he could get an even bigger slice of that juicy pay-per-view pie. This time we have to go with the word of Tyrone Woodley, since again, no official figures have been released. He claims the event did slightly less than the Mayweather vs Logan Paul fight, which would mean around 800,000 to 900,000 pay-per-views. Now if you go with the lower estimate, we get a total of around $48 million, and since Jake owned the promotion company of this event, it is more than likely that he took home at least another $15 million. Before you continue, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. So when we put all of this together, it looks like Jake Paul made a minimum of around $42 million so far with just his boxing, which is truly an incredible amount of money in such a short amount of time with almost no experience. This shows that just like Mayweather, Jake is approaching the sport of boxing as a serious business opportunity by making sure he controls the organizing and promoting of the event and this allows him to earn much more than the average boxer who's just starting out. Not only that, but once the opponent has been selected and the contracts are signed, the massive promo engine behind Jake goes to work, creating absolutely stunning videos with complex visuals, great posters and just the sheer amount of volume of rich media content, which is then blasted upon YouTube, Instagram and all over the internet. A lot of boxers out there would kill for this level of promotional material and not just boxers, many other sports don't even come close to this quality and they have an entire league that is managing their brand. So after the team has done their bit, Jake Paul then goes to work himself and does what he does best, which is creating a hype long before the first punch is even thrown. He manages to get people so fired up in the months leading up to the fight that everyone who's ever watched the Jake Paul fight was either cheering him on or praying that for the love of God someone would knock him the fuck out. Now personally, I have nothing against Jake Paul. I actually like arrogant people that can back their arrogance up and not take themselves too seriously. So I don't mind seeing him win and climb his way up the ladder to perhaps one day fight McGregor. Could you imagine the Jake Connor trash talking? It would just be one constant bleep during the press conference with the occasional Dana White is a f Right now, Jake Paul is rising through the money ranks at a truly phenomenal speed. So fast in fact that you could even say he might be going too fast because with a million dollar fight comes a million dollar opponent and this does not give you enough time to develop as a fighter. If you compare Jake's career path with that of Tommy Fury, you could say that Tommy's taking a more traditional road to the top. I mean, you could say that. You could also say he's fighting handicapped blind donkeys if you look at his opponents. It's actually hilarious that Tommy's calling out Jake Paul by saying he's fighting bums and he should be fighting a real fighter, but really Tommy, are you? Tommy's first fight was against a guy who had 10 wins and 102 losses. I mean, seriously, 102 losses. How do you even get that many fights? Are you taking these on the same day or what? That's just insane. By the way, let's not forget that Tommy Fury actually started out as an amateur fighter with 12 amateur fights under his belt before he turned pro. So much more time to train and much more fighting experience than Jake. So after he's done fighting this 102 loss superstar, Tommy goes and fights a guy who had 0 wins and 26 losses and then finds another guy who had 2 wins and 26 losses. So clearly Tommy is fighting some proper fighters, right? Not some multiple world champion UFC fighter with serious knockout power like Jake does, but really proper Leicester City lads who know how to get their skull smashed in 26 times. Now I'm gonna make a bold prediction here and say that Tommy Fury picks easy mode on every game he plays with aimbot on and still has to buy his ranking from a Korean smurf. That's a League of Legends reference by the way for any of the non-gamers out there. It's not a racial slur or anything, so don't start cancelling me please. Anyways, enough about how Tommy likes to fight donkeys, because it's clear that people are so full of sh** and that they just want an excuse to fight Jake Paul for that sweet payday. 
Now Jake understands the game of boxing promotion and he's cleverly using the Mayweather formula to bring home that cash. Because in boxing the main events are actually the heavyweight fights, you know, the Klitschkos and the Joshuas, the Furies and the Wilders, the big heavy knockouts performed by big dudes throwing punches that can easily break the jaw and neck of an average man. Ooh, tasty. Now most boxers will go through a lengthy round of amateur fights, making no money at all, before they turn pro. After which they fight very inexperienced fighters for several years and make only a couple thousand dollars. Which is pretty much nothing if you consider that it might take you 3 to 4 months to train for each fight. However, Jake Paul started with $900,000 against Deji in his first amateur fight and then skyrocketed to fighting UFC fighters for $15 million. This is an absurdly fast pace and he should really slow things down to fight more inexperienced fighters to give himself time to develop. Slowing down would obviously mean getting much smaller paydays and less glory, but speeding to the top only to get knocked out by an average boxer is not going to help you at all. Tyrone Woodley already showed that picking him was a risky step since that fight could have easily gone the other way. So if Jake wants to make millions in boxing for a long time, I hope he listens to the experts around him and starts picking less risky opponents. Because Gibb and Nate both picked a risky opponent and we all saw how that ended. Clearly Jake has the ability to polarize people and it is paying off in a big way. This is actually how he turns millions of followers into actual buyers, which again is not easy at all, just as this expert. So to pull off a multi-million dollar event, you need to be relevant yourself and you need to fight somebody who is relevant as well. Plus they must have the power to knock you out, but lack the skill to easily do that so that you can protect your own career. Once you've picked this perfect opponent, you basically start a social media war, making sure that mainstream media picks up all your crazy stunts, thereby giving you free promotion. This will most likely piss off every single fight analyst, creating more coverage and more publicity, which then crescendos into millions of dollars. Now I'm not saying I agree with this tactic, but it does seem to be the lay of the land right now. Jake Paul has defined what it is to be a social media superstar and he has fully leveraged its power into not just a business but in an actual empire with dozens of companies all working in perfect synergy. Yes, you could say, well, Jake Paul doesn't do any of this, it's his team that does all of the hard work and to that I say, yes, that's true. However, you do not start out with a great team, you still have to work your ass off to acquire all of that and you also need at least a half-decent product for your team to sell. No, I said half-decent. Yes, much better. This was How Is Jake Paul Making So Much Money From Boxing. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.